Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joyce Strasser. I have the privilege of serving as Dean of the Stillman School of Business at Seton Hall University. And today I have the thrill of welcoming you to this session. I hope everybody is enjoying the conference and this beautiful Friday afternoon. But our session today, Day in the Life, What It's Like to Work in Cybersecurity, will be an excellent one for you. If you've been listening, you'll know that you've heard a lot of impressive statistics about the growth and power of the cybersecurity field. But now we're going to give you the chance to hear from the players, young professionals who are at the front lines of cybersecurity. They're going to share the nuts and bolts. How did they get their jobs? What do they like about their positions? What are their biggest challenges? How did they decide to focus on the cybersecurity industry? These recent graduates have very different backgrounds and you'll see very different jobs, which really just underscores the wide variety of well-paying positions in this high growth field. But first, before we get to our panelists, it's my honor and privilege to introduce two of my favorite colleagues, both from Seton Hall University's Career Center. So we have Bob Franco, who is Senior Associate Director of the Career Center, and Tara Cydia Walters, who is Assistant Director of the Career Center. They will be moderating our session today. And now a few words about our panelists, and of course you're going to learn more about them as they speak. But first we have Nathan Boatswain, who's a Cyber Risk Advisory Senior Consultant with Deloitte. Nathan is a 2019 graduate of the Stillman School. Wonderful, Nathan. He was not only an outstanding student while here, but also a member of our varsity soccer team and a participant in our Pirates Pitch Competition, which is Seton Hall's equivalent of Shark Tank. So wonderful to have you with us again, Nathan. Thanks, Jennifer Mark. Lloyd is also joining us. She is Cyber Second Lieutenant, the US Army. Jennifer is a 2021 graduate of Stevens Institute of Technology, where she earned her degree in computer engineering and is a newly commissioned US Army, Army Cyber Officer. So Jennifer, welcome. And of course, thank you for your service. Great to have you with us. And then we've got Masood Mahaya, who's IT Support Analyst at Take Two Interactive. Masood is also a 2019 graduate from the Stillman School of Business here at Seton Hall and earned his bachelor's degree in IT management. Welcome back, Masood. Looking forward to hearing from you. And then finally, rounding out our New Jersey School panel, we've got Kevin McKenzie, who's Cybersecurity Analyst for the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. He earned his graduate degree in computer science from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. So an impressive group of young graduates, no doubt about it. And with that, I turn it over to my colleagues, Bob and Tara Sidia. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Joyce. I'm excited to be here with graduates from the Stevens Institute, SHU, and NJIT, who are going to share with you their insights on cyber field, as Joyce said. The panelists all had interesting career journeys, have interesting career journeys, and they're working in different functions, and they are ready to share with you. Please know you will have a chance for Q&A at the end of the discussion, so please feel free throughout this discussion to write your questions in the Q&A chat box. And as we go through, um, Bob will, will take all the questions and towards the end, he'll read the questions. So let's get started. Um, to start this discussion off, I'll ask each panelist to share um, how they got their job in the field. So I'm going to ask um, Nathan to get started with that question and possibly share with us what a typical day is like. Nath. Yeah, of course. I'll, uh, hello, everyone. Um, thanks again for having me. I'm definitely an honor to, to be back here um, as part of my first uh, panelist uh, after graduation. So very excited to, to be here and, and thank you again. Um, I'll, I'll try not to uh, not to ramble on as I love to do. Um, but I, I studied mathematical finance and IT at Seton Hall, um, originally really leaning towards investment banking, um, getting into finance. Um, and it was actually a, a group um, at Seton Hall called Alpha, uh, who really kind of opened up my eyes to, to, to what um, consulting was, um, and then eventually what cybersecurity was. Um, how that kind of played out is there's a conference, um, after you are involved with Alpha for the entire year, you go to a conference 
um, at the end of the year, which is essentially a, a large career fair for, for minorities, non-minorities, et cetera, um, to, to really understand what career opportunities are there out there um, and what the different fields are. So I went in with the mind of, wow, I love finance. I really wanted to go investment banking. So of course, I kind of knocked on the doors of JP, Goldman, BNY, et cetera. Um, and, and then after some discussions, I really wanted to, to find a career that, yes, um, kind of had the, the, the um, was able to make me um, money, was able to, to set myself up for the future, um, but also have an impact in the world. Um, and that's kind of where I really dive towards cyber is I got in contact with Deloitte, um, was talking the teetering between risk and financial advisory and cyber advisory. Um, and the example that I brought up in my interview was, was that um, not that my mom does have a Tesla, but I can only imagine if my mom was driving a Tesla um, and God forbid someone hacks into the Tesla, um, it crashes and my mom passes away from that. Um, it really kind of put into perspective that the human, um, all the human implications of cybersecurity and what it means um, in order for these companies to become secure. Um, so that's where, what really delved me into cybersecurity. Um, and, and then from there, I, I had a couple interviews. I, I really, um, I was really pu pushed towards that direction and then eventually um, was able to actually with uh, our fellow panelists here with Masood, um, was able to become a security analyst at Seton Hall to get some um, really hands-on network um, experience, which was great um, to be able to be in, in the weeds of Splunk and, and understand what a security operations center looked like. Um, and then also additionally, Seton Hall actually, this was before the cybersecurity major, of course, I didn't mind her. Um, it, 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 we had our, let's say, guinea pig two-week boot camp um, where we walked through some of those network plus, of security plus, and really looking at, at what different professional certifications um, one can get in the cybersecurity realm. Um, so so that was what, that's what really kick-started my, my journey into cyber. And, and ever since then, um, I absolutely love it. Um, so I've been at Deloitte now for two years, um, recently promoted to cyber, cyber um, security con senior consultant, sorry. Um, and, and what essentially my day entails. Um, so we work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies um, as well as governmental agencies in, in order to help them get their cybersecurity to a mature state. Um, that can either be through assessing. Um, so obviously within the cybersecurity, there's different, um, there's different bench lines and, and, and regulations you have to follow, whether that be NIST, um, whether that be ISO, et cetera. Um, so looking against those benchmarks, how those organizations are doing, um, how we can help them get to a place where the, where the industry is at, and then also how to help people become leaders in those industries, right? Um, you don't wanna be an insurance agency that gets hacked um, and all of your customer information is leaked. Um, a lot of those things is really is really based upon your your brand recognition um, and and people really wanting to to say okay hey you are insurance company X Y and Z I trust you with my information I trust you with my money I know if something goes wrong um, I know that you've done your due diligence um, so really making sure that that those companies continue to have the um, their customers trust um, and, and don't really come into that to that realm uh, of of having to to worry about whose data leaked in a data leak etc um, so. Uh, as a Deloitte um, senior con really worked on assessments, um, some implementation projects, whether that's um, intrusion detection systems or endpoint monitoring um, systems, et cetera. Um, so really able to get that breadth uh, of experience in consulting, which, which is one of the reasons why I definitely um, lean more towards consulting versus an industry cyber role. Um, with my background being in finance, being in IT, um, I, I really didn't feel comfortable that I, I necessarily had um, the, the core cyber technical knowledge in order to go into an industry role. Um, so consulting is really able to give me that breath, really understand all, all the different competencies within cyber, as well as get my hands dirty in implementation projects, developing strategies, um, multi-million dollar strategies for companies, and then also kind of driving value, um, show, showing what value uh, these projects are giving, given that a lot of the time cyber is a sunk cost. It's not really an ROI that you see on cyber. Um, so, so definitely help trying to help understand and socialize that the value that's being driven and kind of the, the assurance that that is, is uh, it provides. I, I know I kind of rambled on a little bit, uh, but but that's a little bit about myself, a little bit about um, what I do at Deloitte. Uh, hopefully that gives you some good insight. Thank you so much, Nath. We certainly appreciate um, that information. We're going to jump to Kevin in a different industry, Homeland Security. Um, so hey, Kevin, tell us about a typical day and just let us know how you got into the field. Sure, good afternoon. Um, so how I got into the field, um, I started studying uh, network security um, in my undergrad. And, uh, you know, towards the end of um, my time in undergrad, I, I started looking into cybersecurity and it became a field that was interesting to me. 
and um, an opportunity presented itself for me to be able to do a master's degree. So I decided to, uh, you know, kind of switch paths and, and go more into cybersecurity. Um, so, so that's really how I started. And, and, and how I got my job is actually through that opportunity. Um, there's a requirement to get an internship. And um, I was able to get an internship here at um, NGOHSP. Uh, and that ended up turning into a full time job. So, so that's kind of the quick backstory of, of my introduction into um, cybersecurity. Um, in terms of my daily um, routine or my daily duties, um, so you know my main task is to work with um, you know over 40 um, agencies within the executive branch in New Jersey in order to protect their devices. Uh, so my main duty is um, endpoint detection and response, but I'm also a part of the team that does uh, vulnerability management. So we um, analyze and protect uh, roughly 60,000 devices. Um, and we're working again with um, a large number of, of, of agencies to protect those devices. And, you know, these are a multitude of devices, um, you know, some, you know, servers, workstations, uh, mobile devices, but also some, some devices that you might not think about, you know, um, devices in mobile vehicles on the road, um, you know, et cetera, those, those sorts of things. Uh, in addition to, to those main duties, um, I also do a lot of automation and uh, scripting in, in this job. So uh, that's an another opportunity to kind of branch out from strictly cybersecurity related topics and, you know, do something um, else. So it definitely helps our team to, you know, automate reports, automate certain actions in order to save time. Um, so, you know, that's just a very quick snippet of, uh, of a daily um, a daily view of, 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 of my job. Awesome, Kevin, and we hope to learn more as we go throughout the session. Masood, let's jump over to you just to hear a little bit more about how you got into the field and what's a typical day like. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So I started here at Take Two as an intern, and I was fortunate enough to have the Seton Hall Career Center as a as a resource available to me as a student. So that really assisted me every step of the way to get to this position. Um, and my experience as a junior cybersecurity analyst um, on campus with um, Nathan and um, with the SOC on campus, they were immensely helpful as well to get to where I am now. And I've been here at Take Two for just over three years now. And although my current position isn't entirely or specifically in cybersecurity, I do utilize the knowledge learned from all my IT classes and experience I learned from my time as a security analyst. But as an IT analyst here, um, I, manager, I, I manage and administer various applications vital for the company to continue functioning. So whether offering basic support for these apps or onboarding new applications, I'm usually there every step of the way to ensure everything performs as intended. Um, they rarely do, but that's what I'm there for. And a large part of my job does involve security, especially when it comes to the security of our applications. My team and I manage, uh, we manage SOX compliance for all our apps. And twice a year, we perform security reviews with our internal audit team for every app that we manage. And um, on top of that, we perform user reviews to ensure the proper employees have access to everything they should, and we maintain separation of duties to ensure no one has access that they shouldn't. Um, but that's pretty much a day in the life in my job. Um, awesome. I mean, security, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, security really is everywhere, and especially in the video game industry, which I work in, um, and which Take-Two is a large part of, it is crucial to keep tight security at, um, at every turn. Just this past year, there have been numerous um, security attacks targeting video game developers. So it is very important to maintain all confidential information and really everything is secure. And um, yeah, so our company is very careful at keeping extreme measures that you know something similar doesn't happen to us. And knock on wood, we continue to keep it that way. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. And what's awesome about this panel today is we get to hear from 
di different perspectives and we get to hear about cybersecurity from different industries. Moving along, I'm going to introduce Jennifer, who is US um, Army second lieutenant, and she comes with a different perspective. So I want Jennifer to share with us today how she decided to focus on cybersecurity and her story is going to be a little bit different. Jennifer. Hi everyone. Um, so uh, like you said earlier, um, I graduated with a degree in computer engineering um, from Stevens Institute of Tech and I actually commissioned from Seton Hall's Army ROTC program as an active duty cyber officer. Um, so Unlike these guys, um, I'm currently in training right now. Um, so I'm back to being a full-time student, just graduated college and we're right back at it. Um, so for the next nine months, um, I'm currently training. Um, I'm actually on our software developer track. Um, so I'm currently learning about how to be a cyber officer as well as working on getting um, basic qualified as a software developer. Um, so for me, I knew that I wanted to do a job in the Army that incorporated my technical skills from college. Um, so for me, I always knew I wanted to do cyber. And I was very lucky to get onto their new uh, software developer track, which is like the more technical role. Um, so basically, um, we're currently I'm in the classroom all day, just uh, learning and reviewing um, different coding, um, like Python. We're going to be moving on to C, ARM assembler, um, so stuff like that. And then once I graduate in July and I'm actually a basic uh, software developer qualified, I will work on like a small team of developers um, writing tools that um, actual uh, cyber operators will use um, to conduct cyber operations. Um, so some of these tools could be like writing root kits, um, projects could be even just us cleaning up like gross code um, from other developing teams. We're writing like a parser just to go through like large amounts of data that we've collected. Um, so we'll actually be uh, doing most of the coding as well. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what a day in life, what my job will be. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to, thank you so much. I'm going to jump back to Kevin. Kevin, could you talk a little bit more about what you like about your position? Um, so I think the main thing that I would highlight is that in, in my position, there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot to learn, and you learn something every day, right? Um, and I'll just give you I'll just give you an easy example. So um, using our endpoint detection and response platform, we're able to see attacks, you know, of all different types, you know, throughout the day, right? And you know, throughout the time using the the platform. And you know, I remember the first time I started using it. I really didn't know a lot of those things, right? Um, so you know, it takes time to you know do the research and and to learn to become competent in order to be able to react and and respond quickly and effectively. Um, so I think that will be the the, the thing that I like the most. Um, we see new things every day, and we we have to adapt and and learn on the fly, and um, it it keeps me interested. Thank you, Nath. Um, could you share a little bit more about, um, I know you expanded a lot earlier, but could you talk a little bit more about what it is that excites you about the role? Yeah, um, I, I would definitely start by saying, Kevin, kudos to you. Definitely running endpoint monitoring and detection and response is a, is a huge effort. Um, it takes a lot of uh, time and takes a lot of patience for sure. Um, so th that, that's something that, that I definitely um, have started to pick up some knowledge in. So that, that gets me a little bit excited hearing you talk about that. Um, but, but back on to, to what I like about my position, um, I, I would say just with my athletic background, I always loved being on the go. Um, I always loved things that were, that, that were new, a, a new challenge, et cetera, like that. Um, and, and I really felt the best way in order for me to kind of align um, going from, from being an athlete um, and always being on the go, always having something to do. Um, to, to kind of shifting into the real world, right? Like working a job, um, having to kind of answer to a lot of people, having to always like have your task done, et cetera. Um, and, and that's where I really kind of push towards consulting. Um, just the ability that um, every, let's say five, six, seven, eight months, um, you're, you're either with a new client or you're with a new kind of work stream on the same client. Um, so, so that was definitely one of the things that really drew me towards consulting is the ability to 
Um, I started off doing assessments, basic cybersecurity assessments across um, some insurance companies, some retail companies, et cetera. Um, so to be able to get that base cybersecurity knowledge across multiple different industries was very interesting because uh, I guess one may look at it where we take a framework, we assess uh, an organization and it's going to be kind of straightforward. Um, but quickly I realized that that's not it at all. Um, either some companies are very policy averse, um, some have different legacy systems that are in place. Kind of when you talk about those endpoints, Kevin, some people may have um, servers that are from 2006, 2007 that may not be able to kind of host um, the different security tools, et cetera, that are, that are a modernization um, of those endpoints. Um, so it's so a really kind of being able to be agile, being able to be adaptable and kind of problem solving on the job um, is what I really liked. And then also the ability to move around. Um, as I said, I've started out with assessments, moved on to, to project management, uh, moved on to metrics, um, onto intrusion detection systems, endpoint monitoring, developing a cloud security strategy, um, recertifying firewall rules, um, so as you see, kind of in my last two years, I've definitely been able to get a breadth of experience um, across the cyber to really find out what I like to do. And as I continue on in my career, to be able to really focus on that, that one thing that energizes me for sure. Oh, that's awesome. So Nath, both you and Kevin really shared a lot about what it is you like about your job and you talked about learning new things, new skills. And early this morning, the speaker from PSNG also talked a lot about different ways in which um, individuals can break into the business, even if your background is not cybersecurity. She mm -hmm. focused a lot on whether it's going to be volunteering or developing different types of skills. I want you, I want the team, the panel today to talk a little bit about an example of a skill or even a class that you didn't pay much attention to earlier in your career that you have since discovered to be really essential. I'm sure our audience really is curious to hear what those skills, what you think those skills are. Jen, did you want to jump in any skills or class that you wish you paid a lot of attention to? Yes, I can definitely talk about this. Um, so for my job, we have a bunch of different tracks that we can go on. Um, for example, we have data science, embedded systems, radio frequency. Those are just very examples of the tracks. And I know like now that I am in it, I really wish that I took classes um, on these topics um, because I know for me, like senior year, um, senior race was hitting and I wanted a more relaxed schedule. But I think at this point, I really regret not um, taking classes and filling up my schedule more um, just with classes that you think might be interested in topics that you could potentially see yourself working in. Um, so one thing I would advise um, you guys who are still in school is to take a class like every semester in something new that you think might be interesting in or that you think you could possibly be working with. Um, don't just stick to the classes that um, obviously are required on your schedule. Um, if you have extra room and with credits to take a class, say in embedded systems or artificial intelligence, um, I highly recommend you do it over just taking like a class that you know is an easy A because um, I definitely did that and now I'm regretting that I didn't take um, classes in those topics because now like actually applying it to my real job, I would already have a better understanding of it or um, I'd know I didn't like it, right? So if you think it sounds interesting, um, I highly recommend that you take a class in it just so you can get a feel of whether um, it might be something that you're interested in working in or possibly a skill that you want to specialize in in your future career. So highly, highly recommend um, don't just slack off senior year um, when your schedule opens up more and take at least like one class in something that may seem hard, um, but you think you could be interested in that will actually apply to your career. Awesome. awesome. Great advice. Anybody else want to try chime in? Uh, Sarah Cydia, there's a question from the field here awesome. that wants to know if, if somebody if somebody can talk about their very first assignment and if at the time they took their first assignment, did they feel that they had the skills at that moment to do the to do that role? I can touch on this a little bit and kind of uh, piggybacking off your question, Teresita. Um, something that I wish uh, that that I really kind of wish I put more emphasis on at Seton Hall um, 
was some of those basic core foundational classes, whether that be business writing, whether that be public speaking, etc. Um, something that I really found kind of uh, onto your point, Lee Sue, uh, your question here about what your first cybersecurity assess uh, assignment was like. Um, I, I came into the cyber industry with with my my knowledge kind of being limited to to what I learned as a as a junior security analyst at Seton Hall um, and in the in on those boot camps. Um, so kind of going into into Deloitte. Um, on my first project, I was, I was definitely a little bit more reserved. Um, I'm going into to this huge company. Um, the our our client is paying lots of money in order for us to kind of come up with a high quality um, industry industry standard deliverable, um, help them get to where they need to be. Um, and, and I definitely sat there and I was like, wow, um, what do, what value do I have to bring to the table? Um, and, and this is kind of where I found I, I would say my niche um, within a lot of my groups. Uh, a lot of the time when you're in school, you definitely take some of the classes a little bit less serious. So again, as I say, whether that be public speaking, business writing, et cetera, and kind of look at it as a check mark. Um, but I would say, especially within me, uh, my peer class that I have at Deloitte, um, the, the ones that really get the farthest are the ones that have those those base skills um, that that I would say being able to to talk to uh, whether it's like I, I actually just this morning presented to a CISO of a of a large insurance company this morning being able to present um, to, to people that may be a little bit more superior to you in terms of their industry experience um, knowing how to socialize information um, knowing how to parse different things so that you're able to tailor your message with who you're speaking to um, if you're going to be speaking with a manager level person who's in the weeds every day um, on endpoint monitoring, you're going to want to give a certain amount of information. You're going to want to make sure that you have a certain level of knowledge in order to speak with this person versus if you're presenting to the CISO who has 12 different cyber domains under them, um, it, it's really looking at they want to know high level how they're doing versus the details, the nitty gritty details. Um, so I definitely say that's something that I've, I've looked at um, from my experience from Seton Hall. And, and I mean, I can I can give a lot of credit to to the public speaking classes as well as um, some of those group presentations at Seton Hall that have really allowed me to be comfortable in front of speaking in front of people, um, knowing what to say, um, knowing how to, to position different messages. Um, so I definitely see that. I, I mean, I, I took a, a, a mathematical finance and IT. I, I didn't really have too much room um, for electives as well as a, a business analytics certificate. Um, so a lot of the time was was going into class and making sure I got that A because at the end of the day, I wanted to, to get a great job at, at the end and have a very good GPA. Um, and I would really say I, I would if I were to go back again and spend some more time, I would definitely um, give a little, bit, a little bit more effort to, to those core business classes that that really set your foundation for, for as you go. Because uh, as they say, you can always learn new tasks as, as long as you have your your foundation, your ability to learn. I, I feel like you can be successful anywhere. Awesome. Awesome. So we're here to share more insights to students about the cybersecurity field. So I'm going to also throw it back to Bob to see because I see a lot of questions coming in through the chat. I want this to be their moment. They have a lot of questions. Bob, um, share some more questions so we could walk away with a lot more gems. Yeah, uh, Jennifer started to answer the, one of the questions in the chat, but I, I guess in the interview process, there are certain qualities that employers look for. Uh, whether they be the technical side or things that are outside the cyber realm that also might have been interesting to them. So what was the interview process like and what were the technical slash other skills? Um, I could take this uh, question um, and the reason I'll take this one is because I'll also be able to answer one of the previous questions as well. So one of the things that um, that my employer looked for was um, the ability to do scripting. And it's also one of the things that I didn't like so much in college. I, you know, I paid attention in the class, but I, it wasn't my favorite topic. And, um, you know, it's definitely a valuable skill to have. Um, and it's definitely um, on requirement sheets, you know, all over the place. It's not going to be for every job, but even being able to understand scripts right? You don't even have to necessarily be able to write them, but being able to understand them is going to be uh, extremely helpful uh, in, in many areas of cybersecurity, right? And in my job, I use uh, scripting all the time. I use it for small personal things just to parse through small amounts of data. I've used it to create tools internally that we use to, um, you know, gather information from our, 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 um, our, our software that we use. 
Um, I've used it to to generate reports for my director, right? You know, he needed information for a hundred thousand IP addresses, and I was able to write up a script that you know goes out and collects the information in a few minutes. Um, so it, it's it's definitely helpful from you know from the perspective of being able to understand scripts um, in many different um, areas, but it's also helpful to um, be able to write tools um and use it to leverage apis for example and help you know overall help make your job um a little bit easier thank you bob keep the questions coming okay well uh kind of jumping on that last question what if somebody is not in a technical field not a computer science major not in it but they want to get into cybersecurity? what steps should they be taking right now and I see Jennifer just uh, added some comments there as well. Um, I just wanted to hop on. Um, I can answer a little bit about this as well and just kind of give my last words of advice because I do have to hop off and go back to class, unfortunately. Um, but I would just say, uh, obviously, I have a degree in computer engineering, but I'm on a software developer track, which is mainly computer science majors. Um, so I didn't I don't necessarily have as much experience programming. Um, but my advice would be um, definitely try and find something that you're passionate about in this field. Obviously, if you're here and you're not necessarily um, major specific, you have an, interested, an interest in the tech industry. Um, so my advice would really be trying to find that niche topic that makes you excited to become an expert in it. Um, this field, um, it can be very rigorous at times and it seems very difficult. So I think if you can find what you're passionate about, um, become an expert in it and then use that to leverage um, your position at your job or maybe you can find a way to then incorporate it. Um, that's going to be really key because you want to make yourself stand out. So I would say definitely find what you're passionate about and network with people. Um, people love talking about their jobs. They love talking about themselves and what they're passionate about. And you're going to find a lot of passionate individuals in this field. Um, like my classmates, like one guy has like a mining rig um, for cryptocurrency. Like you're just gonna find a lot of passionate people in this field um, and it, they all wanna help. Um, everyone loves to talk about um, what they're doing, what their passion is. So like my recommendation is try and network as much as possible, try and figure out what it is you're interested in, You know, take, take a class in it, um, do some outside research um, because even if this isn't your necessary technical background, um, there's a lot of um, resources online that can help you improve your skills on the side so that you can find a way to leverage that and uh, make yourself look better in interviews. And then, of course, you want to do a job that you feel confident in. So you want to become like a technical expert um, in your job or else you're not going to enjoy it. So that would be my recommendation. And I'm going to drop my email um, in the chat. So if anyone wants to email me to ask any questions, um, whether that just be uh, cybersecurity related, army related, I know we have some cadets from the program in here. Um, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, thank you again for allowing me to speak here. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. Um, so, and thank you for sharing. So I'm gonna ask the rest of the panel to probably leave some words of advice with everyone, especially students or professionals who are in the field. Um, what would you, what advice would you give to everybody in terms of how can they persevere in the industry? Who wants to take that? I can start in this one. Okay. Um, I would say definitely expand your horizons. Um, security is a very general term and uh, security umbrella expands across many different careers, personally speaking as well. Um, definitely don't settle for less, but if you do end up in a technical position, there's a very good chance that cybersecurity will play a significant role in your day-to-day -day operations. So yeah, I'd say um, expand your horizons. Thank you. Anyone else? Any word of advice? Yeah, um, yeah I, can, I can go next. Um, so my, my advice would be to um, just try to learn new skills. Um, so Jennifer just mentioned uh, correctly that um, you can find a lot of resources online and there's a lot of open source resources online, which means that they're free. So you can just go out, for example, and download Python and start you know, start coding. 
And, you know, you can do the same for PowerShell, any other tool, right? Think, you know, you can do this for operating systems as well. Linux is a good one to, uh, you know, download and start learning. But the key here is, you know, try to learn something new. Uh, you'll be surprised what's applicable to security. Um, you know, just just go out and, and, and discover something new to learn. Awesome. I, I like that. Um, and adding Kevin. on what Kevin said, um, I, I would definitely go into cybersecurity with the lens is that cybersecurity is not just sitting behind a computer and coding. Um, I, I would say there's there's the technical side to cybersecurity where where you really have the, the um, where you're in your your you're getting your hands dirty with tools. You're writing script as, as Kevin does to, to kind of automate some of his processes, etc. Um, and then there's really like the operational side um, of cybersecurity where you're looking at how do you manage the entire program of cybersecurity? How do you um, how do you ensure that 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 the organization is still protected while also thinking about business cases, et cetera? So developing business cases in order to deploy those tools, as Masood says, um, Masood isn't necessarily going to go and say, OK, hey, I want to stand up tool X, Y and Z and he's going to go do it by himself. Um, there's different processes um, and, and that have to go through in order for things to get approved, um, different development of documentation, et cetera. Um, then obviously there's the strategy side, right? Um, and the strategy side really works a lot with the technical folks, understanding what the technical folks needs are also talking with the business units, understanding what those business teams really require from their applications and then working and developing a strategy that includes everything that the technical team thinks includes the business side and then it comes up with the strategy in order to develop uh, a solution that's practical fits all the different requirements as well as it as well as leaves ease to use for the for the operators um so so really don't limit yourself like for me for instance i i do not have my limited experience with coding is my business um python class at seton hall um i i do not deal with any code during my day to day um i i don't really um necessarily deal with a lot of um hands dirty in tools etc um a lot of my stuff is, is definitely um, being able to come up with a strategy, problem solving, um, presenting to clients, those kind of things. So I, I would definitely say, like, as you're looking into the cyber field, um, if you feel like you do not have those technical skills, do not fret. Um, th that's not a huge concern. There's multiple, there's multiple different avenues within cyber that will allow you to, to kind of use those use those um, th those different skills that you have that you really love to use. If you love coding, albeit. Go ahead and be a coder, be a software developer. Um, if you love developing UIs, develop a UI. Um, but but if you if you if you don't love those things, you can still get involved in the cyber field um, without really having those base knowledge. And I would say something that's really helped me kind of um, get up to speed with some of the technical stuff um, is I know that there are is definitely virtual burnout. Um, everyone's kind of sitting here. I've I've been sitting behind a computer for for how many months now? Going on to counting to years. Um, but but places like LinkedIn Learning, Le LinkedIn Learning, places like Udemy, um, though I, I would say those tools are extremely invaluable. Um, a lot of those, a lot of those um, different courses are taught by industry professionals that that are really extremely passionate. Um, they take the time out of their day to develop courses, take the time out of their day, their day to develop those curriculum. Um, they're extremely knowledgeable in those fields. Learn from those people, and even sometimes you can even reach out to those people to inquire further beyond what the course is there. Um, so, so I would definitely say for like somebody who who doesn't necessarily come from a technical background and I see some of these questions in here and it really seems as if some people um, may be a little bit concerned like, hey, I want to get into cybersecurity, but I don't have that computer science background. I don't have the coding background. I, I would really say um, understand cybersecurity at the highest level. Know that there's the, I, the identity and access management, data protection, endpoint monitoring, know the different realms of cybersecurity. So at least you can sit in a room and have a conversation with those folks. Right to be able to sit at the table, understand you don't have to be a technical expert. That's why there's teams in organizations, right? That's why each person is is in charge of doing their role. Um, if you don't love that technical stuff, know that there is a place for you. Um, know that you, that you can continue and, and you can kind of uplift your knowledge um, through all these different courses. And then also reach out to people, right? Um, re reach out to us as part of the panels. Understand what we do day by day. Understand understand how you can get from where you are to, to where you want to be through those. And, and my last kind of piece of advice is I, I, I harped on this a little bit before, but is it's those intangible skills. Um, people want to be in a room with someone they want to work with. Um, you can have a job that you absolutely don't like, but if you're surrounded by a team that that energizes you, that allows you to kind of be effective, be efficient, 
um, it, it's likely that you're going to stay around. It's likely that you're going to continue going forward because the people around you are, are great people. Um, so, so really think about that, what, what you can bring to a room, what different perspectives. Um, at, at the beginning of your career, don't be shy. Don't think, oh, I'm only an analyst. I'm only a consultant. I don't really have anything to bring to the table. Guys, they're paying you. They brought you on out of school. You, you are an educated individual and you have a lot to bring to the per- to the table your perspectives are definitely wanted um and, and i found that is that i found a lot of success like hey um i deal with partners every day during my practice and that's only because i i was able to sit there and step up and, and give up these ideas to partners show show the initiative like hey um yes there may be some weekend work yes there may be some late nights but hey i'm gonna put in the extra little bit of effort i'm gonna get my knowledge ramped up um, and, and I'm going to kind of be there and be able to figure anything out for you. That, that's what that's what really has helped me um, be successful in, in the in the two years that I have been at Deloitte it is really just being able to figure things out and knowing that like, hey, um, something like endpoint monitoring, it, it, it looks very, very challenging. Um, but, but everything you have to take piece by piece, right? You have to be able to break things down. What are the basic foundations for this for this different um, for this domain? Um, and then you can get more technical as you as you find like, hey, you know what? I love endpoint monitoring. I'm gonna I'm gonna learn a little bit more. I'm gonna learn about all the tools that are available versus just the one tool that I have. Um, so so really really knowing when to to expand and knowing when to kind of move on with that knowledge is a is a great is a great kind of skill as well. Awesome, a lot of gems to take away today. Um, Masood, did you want to jump in? Um, I think Nate said everything very, very well. So I agree. I agree I everything agree. you said. Well said. Awesome. Bob, how's the chat looking? So, I mean, a lot of the skills questions I think have been covered. There was one, uh, again, I don't know what, where you would all go with this, but there was one about implications in cross-border, cross-country, international cybersecurity and asking if anybody has had any experience in that uh, in that realm. Masood, Kevin, I'm not sure if you want to speak. If not, um, I can go ahead. I can touch on this really quickly. Yeah. Um, so everything I do at my current position, um, we are a global company. So we have comp- we have studios in the UK and Japan, all throughout Europe, even Australia. Um, everything we do in terms of security also applies there as well. So um, yeah, our company is running 24 hours around the clock and um, yeah. Anyone else wants to add on? Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just make a quick point. Um, so you know, my main duty is to is to protect our network, right? And I guess you know, if I'm if I'm thinking about a, you know a global perspective for cybersecurity, um, you know, the, the 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 best perspective I can speak from is is what we see in terms of attacks. Um, and just know, I guess the summary here is that um, you know, attacks can come from anywhere, basically. Mm-hmm. Right. As long as your your network is exposed to the internet, as long as your device is on the internet, um, it will very quickly be discovered, and uh, you know someone will start attacking it eventually. Um, yeah, that's a that's maybe as, as much as I could say uh, right now. Yeah, and and I'll add on a little bit just from from a global perspective. Um, so I, I've had a little bit of experience um, actually as an intern. Uh, my, my first project was um, developing non-financial reg reporting. Um, and what that kind of entailed what was the, the organization being able, able to understand where their data is housed, right? Um, this is something that y- you may not think about, whether it's y- you log into your Facebook app, you upload a picture, um, where does that picture actually sit? Um, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of regulations around where data can be housed, ingested, processed, um, how long it needs to be places. Um, so a little bit of experience in that was was understanding the different data localization laws across the across the world. So I was working with a large um, international bank um, and, and helping them understand where exactly in each of the different countries um, they need to actually house that data um, for regulatory reasons. Right. The last thing they want to do is get a fine for for 10 million and 15, 20, et cetera, um, for not kind of doing that due diligence in the background. Um, so so I would say that, like, even if you are um, even if you are domestically based, um, individual, there are always there are always global implications. 
um, that you may not think about. Um, I, I guess uh, to, to my point is that cybersecurity is in your everyday life, right? You log into your, you log into the Zoom. Um, there were cybersecurity measures to ensure that people that were not meant to be in the Zoom were were not at, admitted to the Zoom. Um, and, and these people can, someone can join from Africa, someone can join from Asia, someone can join from anywhere onto the Zoom. As, as Kevin said, as long as you have something internet facing, anywhere in the world can join it as long as they have details around uh, around what you're trying to to, to kind of secure. Um, so, so I would say that from the global perspective, and then also um, I'm sure a lot of the, the, the companies, um, obviously or government organizational um, are a little bit different in terms of global deployment. Um, but a, a lot of the companies such as like Masood, I'm sure that if he had off the, the opportunity and he was really interested in going to Japan, uh, I'm sure that that opportunity would be afforded to him and that he would able to, to be able to transition his skill set and be able to be in into a new environment. So also keep that in mind that, that a lot of these uh, organizations um, when you're going towards, um, do you want to work for the U.S. government? Is that your passion? Is your passion to kind of help secure America? Is your passion to to, to ensure the safety of, of everyone here? Um, is your passion on, on video games as Masood? Do, do you love, for instance, like a video game that you play every day and you want to ensure that everyone from the world is able to access that video game and so you can have the most challenging experience? Right. Or, or do you simply just want to be able to travel? That was something I, I thought about when I when I joined Deloitte. I'm originally from Canada, um, originally from Toronto. So that that was always my, my my thing is that I want to be able to go back to Canada um, when I do have a family and those kind of things um, to be able to kind of transition over there. I know that it's, it's an easy fix um, with Deloitte. They have offices all over the world. If I wanted to go to Japan, if I wanted to go to London, um, which are places I'm very interested in, that there are there is the ability, as well as you don't necessarily have to formally transfer. Um, I, I know that within consulting, um, a little bit different of a perspective, but within consulting, you can get onto projects, um, whether it's working for the government um, or working for, let's say, um, a, a Facebook or working for, a, for, for any international company that you can think of um, where you have the ability to be deployed into those countries. Um, so, so I uh, kind of touched a little bit on on some of the the things that you can you can think about um, when you're doing projects, whether that's the data localization to to really bring up those things, right? Imagine you're in a room, um, everyone's talking about the databases, uh, and and they might not have thought about oh. Are there any requirements to where these databases have, have to be stored? Are there any requirements for this and that? So really kind of coming from the analyst position, coming from the consultant position, not no questions are stupid. Um, get those out there, ask those questions, kind of be, be able to give your perspective in what you're thinking. Um, I would say, especially in the early years, you're never going to look at like, wow, this person asked that question. I would say my rule is always don't ask the same question twice. Um, you can definitely ask clarifying questions, but if you ask the same question over and over again, then someone might become frustrated. Um, but if you show your aptitude to learning, you show that you're you're able to kind of pick up things, you show that you're intrigued. I promise you that will get you will get you very very far. Just being interested in the field, um, and, and that's that's what initially brought me brought me into cybersecurity is just realizing that it it, it has implications to everyday life. So I, I mean, you, you may as well be part of the problem, not the, uh, the solution, and not the problem. Teresita, I think you may owe some donuts. I certainly do. <laughs> I certainly do. Nathan, I think this is an, an awesome way to end the segment. But before we sign off, Bob, is there any burning questions in the chat before we thank our panel? I think it's time to thank the panel. Absolutely. Nathan, M Masood, and Kevin. I just we're so grateful that you were able to take the time out to be here today to share such amazing information with us. We truly feel fortunate to be in your presence right now to learn all of this, all this amazing information. So on behalf of everyone present today, we want to thank you greatly and we hope to stay in touch and all the best. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. And if That's anyone has any questions, feel free, feel free to reach out. I'll also put my email in the chat. Um, as you can tell, I love talking. So if anyone likes some insight or, or just a, to just chat about Seton Hall life, anything, um, I'm always open. Absolutely. Reach out to them on LinkedIn, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>